Welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can use Flux 1.1 for free to create extremely realistic looking images like these ones here, this one, this one, this one, and even this one. That kind of looks like an image maybe your auntie or your uncle would post on their Facebook or Instagram with a caption, out with work friends for lunch, right? <laughs> They're so real because they're a little bit bad that if I saw them in an Instagram or a Facebook feed, I honestly could not tell that they were AI generated. Like I said in the beginning, these were all created with Flux 1.1, which is the new AI image generation model from a company called Black Forest Labs that have been making waves in the AI industry for good reasons, as you can see. Now, you can't use Flux 1.1 in the Black Forest Labs website with a nice interface. You can use their API. However, you can use a website called Together AI that allows you to use it for free because they give you $5 credit. Why? Well, because Flux 1.1 is open source, meaning that you can download it onto your device if you want, but it's a pretty heavy system and it complicates things a little bit. So why not use it for free on a website that gives you $5 worth of credit, which is enough to generate a lot of images, trust me. If you don't know me, my name is Nico. I run an online community called the AI Ranking School Community, where we teach and we support people in their journey to learning how to use all of these AI tools to maximize their search engine optimization, to rank their websites number one, and to create automations that help you with your online marketing. We've got a premium community and a free community. So if you want to test things out and you don't want to commit, that's fine. Test out the free community and then you can come join us in the premium community where you have a lot more dedicated support and extremely high quality tutorials plus two weekly meetings where you can ask us questions as well. So let's get started right away making some very cool images. I'll leave the link to all the assets that I talk about in the video description below. You're going to go to API together and sign in and make an account. We use sign in with Google and use any email of your presence. Once you sign in, it's gonna ask you a few questions. You just create a random username and they even give you an API key with $5 free credits to get started, which is very generous of them. Once you sign in, you'll get this little interface here. We're in the playgrounds and we wanna select images because you can also use other models here, uh, even text to text generation, but we wanna try the image generation model up here. And we want to go to Flux 1.1 Pro. This is using the API from Black Forest Labs. So when you have that selected, you can start it out by prompting it right away. And let's just prompt it with a very simple prompt saying, uh, a girl having coffee in a coffee shop or a woman having coffee in a coffee shop. And when we generate with a simple prompt like that, for the most part, it's going to be too perfect. For those of you who have been around the AI industry for a bit, you can tell when an image is AI generated because it's too perfect, the skin is flawless. In this instance, her eyes a little bit wonky. Uh, let's try another one in Paris. And now we can, because AI has been around for a little bit, we can see that they're just too perfect. She's too pretty. It's those parameters that instantly kind of trigger that, it, that thought of, oh, this is clearly AI generated. She's way too perfect. Her skin is way too flawless. So how did I get images like this that look very real because they're a bit grainy? Well, the secret comes down to the prompting and it's very easy. What you need to do is prompt flux with an image file that represents a image that you would take with an iPhone or with a Canon, like with a raw file. So a Canon raw file ends with the image file CR3 an iPhone raw file finishes with a file format of H-I-E-C, right? Things like that, you can test it out. So instead of a normal prompt like we just did then, a woman drinking coffee in Paris, let's try the file name here and then try woman coffee and see what we generate. The prompt when you use that file name need to be extremely short. You can do very detailed prompts and you will get a good image, but you see that already we're starting to get a real bit, a more realistic type image. There's another little hack here that if you put in a year, for example, here I'll put 2020 and hit enter, it kind of thinks that, okay, it's a 2020 iPhone that we're taking images with, and already you see this very realistic looking image. You can even put the women coffee section within the file name of the image. For example, woman 
woman drinks coffee. Coffee. And we're going to delete all this here. This one's a little bit too real, so let's see if we can randomize it by putting some numbers in here. 20, 2019, see if that helps. That's getting a little bit more real. Let's try another file format, which is just the Canon RAW file and see what we can come up with here. I'll leave links to this file settings in the description below as well. We'll go back and we'll just go here. Uh, woman drinking coffee. Let's try another prompt. Um, low quality phone image. Now we're getting to somewhere that looks very real. She's looking a bit wonky, but you can tell already that the images start looking extremely real. Something of a, something like anyone could take with an iPhone a couple of years ago. Let's try again a few variations and see what's working better. Perfect. Now we're getting to somewhere that looks real. If I saw this in an Instagram feed, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Um, let's say, and it's all about experimenting here. If you want to try and prompt a specific thing here, another very realistic image. There's another thing that you can do as well and just randomize the image. So for example, let's go image and let's put in a dog here of the image name, delete everything else. Perfect. That's a very real looking image because it's a bit kind of bad. Uh, let's try another one and just put in a year. 2022 and see what we come up with. While that's loading, let's prepare another one with the iPhone raw image and go back to our API together. There you go, there's another little image there, a bit scary of a dog. Perfect, that's probably the best one so far. It looks very real, dog in the beach. Really, really incredible. Now, obviously you can create a lot more detailed prompts. To help you with that, I've generated a Flux prompter custom GPT that you can access in the resources below. And let's say uh, a dog playing on the beach, uh, catching a ball. Now, all this custom GPT has in the back end is it has been told one of the best ways to prompt a Flux model, and it's gonna give you three options to choose from. But you can see with prompts like these, you get extremely you get images that start obviously looking like they were AI generated. You see, so this one obviously looks a little bit fake. It looks a little bit too perfect. So again, the trick here is to place that image file name. Another trick here is that you can get random photos by just placing random image files here, for example. Place the name there and you kind of see what you get, which is scary and also very interesting at the same time. If I change the image file to dinner photo 20, 20, 2019, if I change the number, let's see what we get. See, another random image, but it looks extremely realistic because it's not so perfectly detailed. I really love this. The idea here is just to experiment with these models and with the best prompting style for you. See this one I like because it's grainy. It's something that I would have seen in maybe 2017 on Instagram from a pub that doesn't really know how to take images. <laughs> it's really, really good. Uh, the other one you can do as well is selfie. Uh, mirror selfie. And if we do this correctly, it should generate a random person taking a selfie in the mirror. There you go. Nice, it's a little bit artsy, pretty, pretty cool. And we can even put it here as well, see if we get a difference. Pretty spectacular stuff. You can get extremely realistic looking images as well. Now, you can use the API in a lot of places. My preference is using it in fold.ai. You also get free credits when you use that. I like using fold because it also allows you to train a flux model with LoRa, which is just a model that's been created to train on objects or a subject, whether that's yourself or a product that you might have. I'm preparing a tutorial on how to do that and also how to place it in an automation. That'll be out shortly. 
if you want to make sure you don't miss that out, make sure you subscribe and like the video so you'll be notified when the next one comes out. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please throw me a like and a subscribe. And if you wanna learn more about how to use all these AI tools to maximize your search engine optimization, marketing and create really cool automations that'll make your life a lot easier, you should check out our community. In the free community, we can get you started with really high quality tutorials. If you go to the classroom section, there is an AI powered SEO Kickstarter and even a content automation Kickstarter that'll help you to get started on how to correctly automate your content creation. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.